Meister Opera. My name is Philippe, I'm your host, and this is the third lesson in my series on the New School Singing track system. We've talked about overtones, we've talked about mouth positions, and I did explain how the tracks work, but now it's time to go in depth so that we can complete a set. Now sets are these numbers and letters in parentheses that I'm using to analyze singing. And I'm also using these when I practice to make decisions about how I'm going to approach a particular piece or a particular phrase. There are three tracks in this system. First is called track G and it stands for glottal track. It's probably the one you use to speak for the most part. I'm using it right now to speak to you. When you're looking at phonetics and when you're looking at speech pathology the vowel shapes that they describe are generally going to be G track. Have you ever been out walking and you cross a bridge and you look out in the water and you see what looks like a wave except it's not moving it's just still. It doesn't move down the river or up the river it stays exactly where it is. Now the reason this wave forms is because there's some kind of obstruction under the water. Maybe you can't see it, but there's something there, probably a big rock. This kind of wave that seems to be standing still is called a standing wave. Imagine your tongue is like a rock in a river and that the sound is like the water flowing down the river. If you don't put anything in the way, you're not gonna get one of these standing waves. But as soon as you do, you get a standing wave. Now these standing waves are what you're hearing when I change nodes in a track. Now what's a node? This is a new word I'm introducing to you today. The positions I showed you in the first lesson for S track and a little bit in L track, those are gonna be called nodes. So the number on a track is a node. Let's just talk about track G. When the tongue gets closer to the roof of the mouth, the wave that's being formed, the standing wave, gets a higher and higher frequency. That's essentially what's going on with your tongue. It changes the timbre in a way that lets us hear vowels. As you make the gap between your tongue and the roof of your mouth smaller, you raise the pitch of the overtone that's being created. And that overtone you can just think of as a wave, a standing wave wave. So when you move towards the roof of your mouth you get E and as you pull away you get E, E, A, O, U. You're gonna be having a really hard time making vowels by just moving your tongue. In fact because you want your tongue to be in the middle of your mouth more or less for the G track and just kind of changing its shape. It's the one with the least amount of tongue movement if you were going to just sing the whole track. That's one reason why it's the most natural way people feel of making the sound. And you have speech level singing and all these uh, methods that rely on speech and try to turn it into singing. Those are basically relying on the G track, at least for their theory. I'm not so sure that in practice that's actually what they're doing all the time, but that's how they try to explain it. So you see these numbers I have on the left. These numbers represent the mouth positions, but they're arranged according to overtone. And something really interesting happens is that we start to see some rules develop. So as I go lower on this diagram, so towards negative three, the same node in any given track starts to move towards the back of my mouth. Now another interesting thing that's going to be going on at the same time is that when I change the pitch I'm going to also change the distance between the nodes. The lower the pitch the closer they are together and the higher the pitch the further apart they get. Someone else can explain the science behind that. I, I'm not a physicist. I'm not an acoustician, so I don't quite understand how that works. I just know from experience. If you use G track, you can kind of just stay there. And also you can combine it with track S. That's going to work just fine. And you might be asking, why don't I just talk about front of the mouth versus back of the mouth? Well, the idea here is to organize all of your timbres according to overtones. And so these tracks help you find your way. I'm going to start by singing in G track. And I'm going to use a nasal solution. This might sound familiar to you as the quote-unquote leggero sound. 
Crap. Okay, so now I think I remembered to turn on the pad. Now my tongue is more or less staying in the middle of my mouth. If I were to plug my nose and try this, I would get... And it becomes really obvious that I'm actually letting air out of my nose. Some people call this the NG solution, or the NG resonance. The word for it is nasality. I'm singing in a nasal way. Now that's different, some people would argue, from... But these are actually both nasal. Nasal is not all or nothing. Nasality just means that you've opened the villum. So you've opened a little gap, and it has the effect of making the overtones in track G stronger. I keep forgetting this pad. And now that, that's not the only way to approach track G. I could also use a little bit of a squeeze in the throat to strengthen the overtones in track G. Now it's gonna sound, should sound pretty close to the same if I plug my nose. So I don't have air coming out of my nose using this solution. So that's what I call the knurdle solution. I'm not meaning to use these words in a derogatory way. I know that a lot of teachers are telling you that knurdle is always bad, and knurdle actually means dumpling, but a knurdle is this er, er, like Kermit D. Frog. Has a really, really, really strong knurdle. But if you're good at using this tastefully, you can do a lot with it, and it can be a very nice sound, and it has the effect of making a little hot spot right where your tongue is that makes all of that resonance a little bit stronger. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen and down the mountainside. Now that's a knurdle. You may have people telling you this is opening the throat. It's actually the opposite. It's a little bit of a squeeze in the throat, and just above that, you have a feeling of openness. What's making the whole thing work, just like anything in the voice, is constriction. Or oh, shot fire, up for down, shot fire, up for down. Got a city officer down. Shot fired. Shot fired. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you a different approach for this first phrase of Ecco ridente in cielo. Ecco ridente in cielo. So that's a very, very different kind of sound. I'm not really using more breath, but it's a much louder sound than the leggero coordination I showed you that relies on track G. See you guys. <laughs>